Welcome to People's American Stories. I'm your host, Tracy Hawkins, and as my featured guest this evening, we have none other than the founder and creator of FacesOfMagic.com, parent company to People'sAmericanStories.info, Mark Presley. Tonight we'll be discussing how he's gotten into magic, how he has honed his skills to become the accomplished magician and illusionist he is today, and how he has combined his talents into what has grown into peoplesamericanstories.info. So without further ado, please welcome Mark Presley. Welcome to the show, Mark. Your show. How does it feel to be on the other side of the microphone? Uh, it takes a little bit of you getting used to, but you know, I, th- I think I'll be able to handle it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. You always do great on your interviews. Why, well, thank you. You're welcome. Many people have been inquiring. There have not been any podcasts lately, but I believe our little birdie told me it's you're working on a new character. Could you care to elaborate? Well, I- I'll do as, as best as I can. Uh, of course, the character, I cannot get too much into detail because it's going to be released uh, October 31st on Halloween. How exciting. Very exciting. 12 a.m. Central for uh, you know anybody uh, uh, on the other side there. <laughs> but, uh, you know... It's a character that's been in the back burner for about five years, and I can't even remember exactly the date and everything, uh, but, uh, you know, I had a family member getting married, and we're at the Mall of America. Oh, man, fun place. That that is some mall. Got an amusement park in the middle of it. I know. I'll never forget that I I fooled... uh, my five-year-old thinking uh, that there was a little boat ride we're going in, and it was actually the log ride, and uh, I don't think he's ever going to let that one go. But anyway, <laughs> it spawned off uh, at a certain store there that got my uh, my little magic brain thinking, hey, wouldn't this be great if I could do this? Uh, and I actually think that uh, the idea was like uh, uh, created even before then, but that kind of even, you know, expanded my thinking even more on this uh this uh, magical character idea. Excellent, excellent. Perhaps we could touch a little bit more about that in the uh, conclusion of our interview. Sure. For now, I'd like to go back in time, uh, do a little explaining on how you got involved in all of this. I mean, you're a jack of all trades. You've done DJing and you've done web design, you've done videography, photography, you do the blogs, you people's American stories, and of course, you've gotten awards for your sleight of hand magic, as well as your illusions and stage shows. Could you uh, explain how you got into all of this? Oh boy, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try my best. But, uh, you know, I started magic at about six years old, uh, v- fairly young. You know, my dad took me to a magic shop and, uh, you know, I ended up uh, coming home with this 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 uh, magic gag that he bought me. It was uh, a spring-loaded snake lighter. When you pull on the the, uh, the trigger that would normally make the lighter light, a, uh, a spring snake jumped out, scared the crap out of people. <laughs> but you know, I, I was hooked. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was cool. And then my brothers and sisters, of course, would show card tricks, you know, once in a while. And you know, I think that's just what what spawned it, you know. And uh, that's what makes us magicians, uh, magicians. And we never grow out of it, you know. We just instantly get get hooked. Of course, well, I understand. Also, magicians are the type of sort where once you're bitten, you've got it. You're hooked. Yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, they say that uh, you're in the magic for a good part of your life, uh, and then uh, when you discover girls, <laughs> you get out of it for a little bit, and then, uh, and then uh, you know, once you, you get that out of your system, uh, you get back in, and then, and then you'll know if you have true magic blood. Right. Well, magic is definitely something that's in your blood, I know that, and there's been numerous articles about you and the different stage shows that you did for benefits and the classes that you teach to young children, as well as one that was fairly recent about a life-threatening event that magic actually saved you. Could you explain that a little? Well, yeah, sure, I will the best I can. Uh, Let's see, this happened uh, 19... uh... 1996, uh, you know, for some extra cash, I was cleaning mm-hmm. a restaurant, and it was late at night, and to keep a long story short, uh, some guys, four masked guys, broke in the restaurant while I was cleaning, uh, and they went to break open the safe, and in the process, they handcuffed my hands with these, like, riot handcuffs, mm-hmm. uh, really tight, uh, and, and, you know, when I was little, I always used to go to the library and check out books on magic, and one of the things that attracted me 
uh, I remember is I had gotten a book on Harry Houdini mm -hmm. and it was explaining his uh, escape techniques. And uh, when they handcuffed me in the process of them telling me to put out my hands, I had a flashback of reading that book and I did one of the things uh, that I read in the book that Harry Houdini did. And it ended up saving me and getting out of uh, what could have been a very bad situation. They were working on the safe, and when they came back to check up on me, I did a disappearing act. Awesome. So that, that was pretty cool. Now, after that heralding event, I understand that you uh, had a bit of a epiphany and ended up doing a benefit show for some people here in Fox River Grove. Um, would you give a little more detail on that, please? Yeah, well, it was just funny because, you know, after that happened, that, that uh, whole robbery slash uh, situation, you know, hostage situation, mm -hmm. uh, and they did catch those guys, by the way, afterwards, about three weeks later, so I was happy about that because uh, yeah. it was really bad. I was actually having uh, nightmares that they're coming uh, to get me because <laughs> I had a car. I had a, this convertible, 1985 uh, Cavalier convertible with a license plate Magic 5 labeled on it. I'm thinking, well, these guys, you know, they could find Easy to find of, you. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I did this uh, fundraiser show, and it was for the, the tragic bus accident. And I just, when I think of that, I just uh, just think of the, those poor parents that, that had gone through that, uh, the big tragic bus accident that took uh, seven lives. And, you know, uh, being through kind of like a, a life, you know, your debt situation, you know, I, I kind of wanted to give back because I felt like, you know, God really uh, saved me that day. And uh, so I did this big benefit show where I uh, donated. I did a big magic show, illusion show, and all the proceeds went uh, to the uh, Fox River Grove Memorial Pavilion, which uh, they, they made this beautiful brick garden right outside the, the library. So it's a nice kind of place, uh, you know, in memory of the the seven children who lost their lives, uh, you know, a place for, for parents and friends to go and, and reflect. Of course, yes. Now, to match all your different talents, you also have various characters that you use in your different shows. Mm -hmm. The fun-loving, goofy magician who's a riot. You have the more serious kabuki magician who, in the beta testing days, I understand you had a paranormal experience, but we'll get into that when that comes up on the screen. Sure. Would you like to tell me a little bit more about your goofy, fun-loving character, the Nergician? Uh, the Nergician is just an idea I came up with. Uh, it's just this, this nerdy uh, guy that does magic, and it appears as though he has no clue What's going on? He literally isn't playing with a full deck, you know. <laughs> but in the in the end, he prevails, and uh, you know he fools the pants off the audience, and and they get some good magic, some great magic, and uh, some comedy. Uh, now this is my Kabuku uh, character I've been working on, and I'm I'm painting the faces of magic uh, logo, which needs some work. It looks like a demented banana or something. I don't know. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, when I'm working on this character, whenever I'm, I'm doing my magic, I try to videotape myself. And uh, here, this is where the supernatural uh, uh, occurrence is happening. Uh, I was reviewing my videotape. You'll see it come up in a little bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was, I was reviewing the video, and I saw a face on my shirt, and, and, and it freaked me out. Now, this isn't any sort of marketing ploy you know for my uh up upcoming character this really did happen Look uh, at and that. I, don't, I don't i don't know what to make of it you know? i make a face and i'm sure the listeners and viewers will too when they review this yeah i, I mean i hope it's a, a good sign i don't know i'm sure it is but unfortunately we do have to wrap things up but remember, if you'd like to be featured on People's American Stories podcasts, go to peoplesamericanstories.info and click on the We The Podcast link and fill out the form, and you too may be featured on People's American Stories. And don't forget, Saturday, October 30th at 12 a.m. midnight, www.facesofmagic.com, the unveiling of the new character.